We head to Lance Arena, home of the EIU Panthers, but first, we'll start with Pemberton Hall, the home of Eastern Illinois basketball from 1911 to 1938. Pemberton Hall opened in 1909, when Eastern's enrollment was around 1,100. The gymnasium was connected to the first women's dormitory built at a state school in Illinois. Pemberton Hall is infamous for the ghost of Mary Hawkins, an urban legend dating back to 1917, that Mary Hawkins was murdered by a janitor. It wasn't true. Claims of her ghost playing the piano or painting on the walls persist to this day. The gym at Pemberton Hall would be quickly outdated and there would be calls for a new gym in 1928. Seating was too small to fit the student body, despite a balcony being built off student fees with no state aid. And schools would refuse to play at EIU's gym because it was inadequate, such as Indiana State, Illinois State, Bradley, and Milliken. A new gymnasium bill would be introduced in 1934, but it died in committee. It was reintroduced in 1935, and plans called for a 2,500 to 3,000 capacity with built-in balconies, as the Pemberton Hall gym was built during the Theodore Roosevelt era. The Pemberton Hall gym was overused from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. five days a week. The playing court was only 67 by 31, when a regulation size court was 94 by 50, and the dressing rooms and offices were super tiny. The Pemberton Hall gym was a subject of mockery with nicknames such as the Cracker Box, Cigar Box, Cloak Room, Telephone Booth, Pem Hall Annex, the Standing Room Only Place, the Floor Without a Boundary, the Salmon Can, the Rally Coaster, the Doll House, the Back Door of Pemberton Hall, Defeats Alibi, Relic of Once Upon a Time, Teddy Roosevelt's Monument, EI's Ice War, Chamber of Horrors, and EI's Laughing Stock. Coach and athletic director Charles Lance was having trouble getting Little 19, which is the conference they played in, coaches to play at Pemberton Hall. Milliken refused to for years. Among the list of issues other teams would have would include they would have trouble finding the gym, have no dressing room, they would play on a court a fraction of the size of a regulation size court, they would crash into wooden guards, they wouldn't know where the out-of-bounds line is, and then they would have to deal with roof leaks. The Pemberton Hall gym had a 500 capacity. The crowd would overflow onto the floor, and people would see the worst aspect of the college, and it would form their impression of the school. This illustration shows how small Eastern's gym was compared to ISU and also Southern and Western. Eastern's gym at 67 by 31 was only 44% of a regulation size court at 94 by 50. Once the bill would pass the legislature for a new gym, there were already calls to name the new gym after coach and athletic director Charles Lance. Lance was the AD from 1911 to 1952. He was the football head coach for nearly 30 or nearly 25 years, and he was the basketball head coach for around 25 years. Teams coached by Lance were often referred to as the Lancemen. Originally, the gym would not be named after Charles Lance. It was initially named the Health Education Building when it opened in 1938. But 15 years later, in 1953, it would be renamed Lance Gym. Here is an architect's rendering in 1936, two years before the gym opened. Construction would start in 1937. Lance Gym would be brick with stone trim. It would have a large gymnasium floor that could serve as a basketball floor and an auditorium. Plus, there would be two small gymnasium floors and classrooms. The construction cost for Lance Gym was estimated at $550,000. Here's a construction photo from 1937. Here is a revised architect's rendering from 1937, one year before it opened. On the left is the layout of Eastern's campus in 1937. Circled in blue is where Lance Gym would be located. And on the right is a photo from 1956 of Lance Gym on a snowy day. A couple highlighted features of Lance Gym when it opened included a projection room at the top of the north bleachers, making it possible to have moving pictures, and a new scoreboard that was one of the best the school could get as it was electrically controlled from the bench, while the controller would have a loudspeaker to announce substitutions. And that new scoreboard is pictured on the right. Here is a 1938 photo of Lance Gym as it was about to open. On the left is another photo of Lance Gym, then called the Health Education Building, right when it was about to open. The new gym opened new doors for scheduling for Eastern, as Milliken would now agree to come to Charleston after refusing to for years. In fact, the inaugural year of Lance Gym would see Milliken, Southern, Indiana State, Western, Northern, and Illinois State all agree to visit Eastern and Lance Gym's first season. Here is a blueprint of Lance Gym when it opened in 1938. There was a 33 by 42 stage, 
So that way this floor could also function as an auditorium. And there would be classrooms along with dressing rooms and storage rooms underneath the stands. One of the first visitors to Lance Gym was First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt was touring the New Deal sites as there were three in Coles County. And Eleanor Roosevelt spoke in front of over 2,000 people at Lance Gym in 1938. The first basketball game at Lance Gym was December 7, 1938. There was a 2,200 capacity attendance, which set a new record crowd to watch a basketball game in Charleston as Eastern took down Southern 49-36. The school yearbook at the end of the year claimed that every home game brought 3,000 sellout attendance, which contradicted the 2,200 attendance on the previous slide. Here's a 1942 aerial view of Eastern's campus circled as Lance Gymnasium. Here's a photo of the game from 1944. It's much less crowded than it was when the gym opened in its first season. And a lot of that was due to World War II, as during World War II, male students at Eastern dropped to a low point of 35. The most iconic feature of Lance Gym was the 12 and a half foot clock, which was constructed to be seen anywhere from campus as campus was laid out in 1938. On the left is a 1944 picture of that clock lit up at nighttime, so you can see it from anywhere on campus. Obviously, as Eastern expanded their campus throughout the decades, that was no longer true. Here's the map showing the 1940 enrollments of Illinois schools. U of I had about 14,500, Southern had 2,300, ISU had 2,000, Northern had 1,200, Eastern 1,200, Western 1,100. This map also shows the number of Eastern students from each county, and 314 of Eastern's 1,218 students came from Coles County, which was 25.8%. And a big reason why over a quarter of Eastern's enrollment came from Coles County can be illustrated in this roadmap from 1946. This was in the pre-interstate era, and today I-57 is close to where US-45 is on the map and I-70 is close to where US-40 is on the map. Here's a 1950 aerial view of Eastern's campus circled as Lance Gym. Here's a photo from the 1951 game against Southern. It looks to be sold out. Here's the trophy case in the lobby of Lance Gym in 1952. Presumably, all those trophies are from the Illinois Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. From 1949 to 1953, Eastern had a 52-game home winning streak at Lance Gym. And here's a picture of a banner congratulating the Panthers on 50 home runs in a row. The photo on the left is from 1957, showing Lance Gym functioning as an auditorium. And there's a packed house on the photo on the right for a basketball game. You can see the interlocking EI logo on that one lady's shirt. These photos are from a 1958 game. You can see people peeking through the windows in the doors. Here's a photo of a crowd outside of Lance Gym in 1959. And here's an aerial shot of Eastern's campus in 1960, looking westward. Here's a 1961 photo against what appears to be Northern. And here's a colored 1962 photo against what is likely Illinois State. More colored photos on the right in a 1966 game against what appears to be Northern. You can see the scoreboard in the picture on the right. And on the left, you can see the midcourt logo with the interlocking EI. You can also see the stage behind the basket. So Lance Gym could also function as an auditorium. One cool feature of Lance Gym is the sculpture of a football player on the facade of Lance Gymnasium. You can see it on the corner of the building. It's about 20 feet high. Lance Arena, where the Panthers play today, would have groundbreaking in July 1964. The estimated construction cost was $2.58 million. Half of the cost would be through tax funds and half of the cost would be through student fees. Here's a construction photo in 1964. The planned completion date was January of 66. Here's a construction photo in May of 65. It was decided pretty quickly that the new building would be named Lance Arena and the old Lance Gym would be renamed after the head of Women's Physical Education Department, so McAfee Gym. And like the Pemberton Hall building, McAfee Gym is still standing today. Here's a view of court level from the balcony during construction in 65. Here is an aerial view of Eastern's campus in 65. It is looking northward, and in red is Lance Gym, and in blue is the new Lance Arena. Lance Arena would feature a lot of golden brick, granite, and glass. One highlighted feature was the press box at the top of the bleachers would accommodate six radio stations and two television stations. The west balcony would have permanent seats, while the north, east, and south balconies would have portable bleachers. Here's a photo of when it opened in December of 66. 
The first game would be on December 5, 1966, in front of 2,500 attendants as Eastern smoked Cleveland State 97-83. to Here's a photo of a game soon after against Eastern Michigan. And then another photo one month later in January of 67 against what appears to be Western. And then another photo a month later in February of 67. You can see a curtain covering one of the end balconies. Sometimes that still happens today. Here's a March 67 photo of a high school super sectional game between Collinsville and Effingham. It was sold out with 6,600 fans. So that would indicate an original capacity of 6,600. One of the first entertainment acts at Lance Arena was Bill Cosby in 69, followed by Neil Diamond in 71, Jimmy Buffett in 74, and Cheap Trick in Kansas in 77. Eastern would spend many decades in the Illinois Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. The Illinois Intercollegiate Athletic Conference was also nicknamed the Little 19 Conference, and in 1950, it would be renamed the Interstate Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. The Interstate Intercollegiate Athletic Conference would disband in 1970. Here is an aerial view of campus in 1970 looking northwest, circled is Lance Arena. You can also see the new football stadium. Overall, construction costs would end up at $2.86 million, but there would be an $825,000 addition to the building in 1967. Pictured in the top left is the scoreboard in 72, and then the top right is a picture I took of the scoreboard in 2019. And then by the time I went there in 2022, the center scoreboard was taken away, and now they have two video boards in the corners. Division II Eastern Illinois hosted Division I Ole Miss on December 18, 1974, and the Panthers cooked the Rebels 85-65. Ole Miss had defeated Texas and Arkansas by 8 and 11 points in their prior two games. The EIU fans heckled the Ole Miss coach as he had three technical fouls called on him during the game. Ole Miss has a history of visiting downstate Illinois mid-majors. Ole Miss visited Bradley in 93 and 2015. Illinois State in 78 and 2018, Southern in 93, and Eastern in 74. Here's a little comparison of the lower level seats. In 75, you can see that there were wooden bleachers, and then those wooden bleachers are still there in 95. But today, those have been replaced. You have blue chairback seating on one side, and then blue bleachers on the other side. And then here's a comparison of the wall behind the stands. I pieced together two photos, one from 75 and one from 78 where it shows the EIU Fighting Panthers with the Leaping Panther. At some point in the 90s, they repainted it, so now it says Eastern Illinois University Panthers, and it has the old NCAA logo from the 90s, and it's still there today. These photos are from 76. Top left is a game against Western. Bottom left is a game against Chattanooga. Bottom right is a game against Bridgeport, which was a 6,000 sellout. Eastern would be one of the founding members of the AMQ-8 in 1982, which would become the Mid-Continent Conference. In 1996, Eastern would move to the Ohio Valley Conference, and Eastern has been in the OVC ever since, and they will be joined by old rival Western Illinois next year. A Big Ten team visited Lance Arena on December 3, 1987, when the Panthers beat the Badgers 59-52 in front of 4,793 attendants. Eastern would qualify for its first Division I NCAA tournament in 1992, 1,500 attended the party at Lance Arena, and the photo on the left is head coach Rick Samuels. The photo on the right is player Barry Johnson. To get there, Eastern had a shock Green Bay in the Mid-Continent Conference semifinals, 75-65. Green Bay had entered that game 25-3 and was sitting squarely on the bubble. Green Bay's head coach, Dick Bennett, and their superstar player, Tony Bennett. In 1995, a statue was erected outside of Lance Arena. It is one of the few examples of a woman's statue outside of a college basketball arena, as it is for softball and women's basketball player Nancy Kassebaum. And inscripted on the stone is challenge to excellence and a tribute to the women of Eastern, past, present, and future. Eastern would clinch their second Division I NCAA tournament in 2001 in crazy fashion as they overcame a 21-point deficit with 8 minutes and 55 seconds left to defeat Austin P 84-83. And Eastern's comeback win would have the domino effect of causing what Mike and Mike coined the greatest sports call in history by Austin P announcer Greg Walker. 2001, Austin P playing Eastern Illinois. Austin P is called for a goaltend 
in the closing seconds that winds up costing them the, the championship game, and Eastern Illinois, EIU, winds up going to play in the NCAA tournament, and the Govs, the Austin P. Governors, do not. Greg Walker made the call. It remains, in my opinion, even greater than do you believe in miracles, <laughs> greater than, uh, than, than uh, I don't believe what I just saw. This is the greatest call in the history of sports. Illinois head coach Bill Self would call Eastern coach Rick Samuels to congratulate EIU, and Bill Self publicly stated that EIU could make noise in the NCAA tournament. 2005 marked the end of an era as 25-year head coach Rick Samuels was let go. He went a perfectly symmetrical 360 and 360. He led Eastern to their only two Division I NCAA tournament appearances, and his firing was a very emotional event on campus. His player Andy Gopshinsky was quoted, when he told us, I felt like someone punched me in the stomach. Dick Vitale was quoted, The situation in the world of college coaching is wacky and unfortunate. You have a year, 2001, when they make the big dance and people think you're a hero. And the next year they want to get rid of you. We have to change the way we look at things. Eastern has had a hard time replicating the level of play they had under Rick Samuels. As Eastern had a 500 record in the 25 years under Rick Samuels, but a 383 winning percentage in the 18 years since Rick Samuels. The blue on the graph shows Eastern under Rick Samuels. However, the seven median seasons are removed, so it's an apples to apples, 18 years to 18 years comparison. And the black bar on the graph is Eastern in the post Samuels era. Obviously, both lines are sorted from the highest winning percentage to the lowest winning percentage. The highest profile network a game at Lance Arena has been on is ESPN2. When on Saturday, February 3, 2007 at 5 p.m., Eastern hosted Sanford. In the only time Lance Arena has hosted an Associated Press Top 25 team was on Wednesday, December 30, 2011, when the 20th-ranked Murray State Racers came up to Charleston. On Friday, November 3, 2017, Eastern Illinois, the local area of Charleston, Mattoon, in Coles County had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity when the state's flagship school, the Illinois Fighting Illini traveled 45 miles in two counties south from Champaign to play a true road game at EIU in a hurricane relief exhibition game. The 5,400-seat Lance Arena was sold out for the occasion, and in an absolute shocker, Eastern Illinois stunned the Fighting Illini 80-67. This past season under head coach Marty Simmons, who was a local High school star about 75 miles away in Lawrenceville, Illinois. Eastern notched the biggest upset by point spread in college basketball history when they defeated Iowa 92-83 as 31 and a half point underdogs. Per ESPN Stats Info, 30 plus point underdogs were previously 0 and 558 in the last 30 seasons that they had tracked it. When you walk into Lance Arena, the lobby area will have displays of Eastern Illinois history. Obviously, you're going to see a lot of Tony Romo, Sean Payton, Jimmy G, Mike Shanahan. On the basketball side, you'll see the retired jerseys of number double zero, Kevin Duckworth, who is a two-time NBA All-Star, and number 44, Henry Domerkant, who is a two-time NCAA scoring runner-up. A cool little quirk about Lance Arena that you can tell that it was built in the 1960s is the no smoking signs inside the arena, as if anyone's going to be smoking inside Lance Arena today. And you will also see signs for the classrooms inside Lance Arena. Eastern's two most played rivals are Western Illinois at 167 meetings and Indiana State at 124 meetings, who's about 45 miles away. Eastern and Western play for the old Rail Splitter Axe Trophy, which is a heavy axe weighing 30 pounds. Lincoln was nicknamed the Rail Splitter, hence the old Rail Splitter Axe Trophy. The trophy was introduced in 1977 and then the trophy ended up in a storage closet 
soon after but was rediscovered in 2015. And here are the views of the four sides of Lance Arena today, starting with the non-press box side. Then that's the press box side, although this photo is from 2019 when they still had that center scoreboard. That scoreboard has now been removed, and there's video boards, two of them in the corners instead. That is one end balcony, which they've turned into luxury seating. Although on a special occasion like the 2017 Hurricane Relief Exhibition Game versus Illinois, they rolled out those bleachers. And then the other end balcony is also portable blue bleachers. They rolled them out for this game against Illinois State since it had a big crowd. But if it's a lower crowd, they'll put a curtain over that end. 